Hey, 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 everyone. Good morning. It is morning. So good morning. It is your favorite college for free coach, Tamika L. Williamson, known as the college prep boss. And I am coming to do another segment with you. And we're going to talk about some yummy things, you know, um, we're talking about college acceptance or college admittance, whatever you want to call it, and financial aid packages. Um, and we're going to have a special guest who's going to join us in this conversation. And we're going to break it down for you because we want you to understand once you get your acceptance letter, what does it mean, what to look for, and how what you need to do next, especially if you got... If you're some of the, what I call intentional ones who got acceptance letters and financial aid packages at the same time, we're going to talk about that as well. So let's get ready to get started. If you know someone who currently has a senior who has, uh, who's received their acceptance letter or they're waiting on their acceptance letter, you need to invite them now. So share, invite uh, right now to, on all your social on your social media platforms. If you're listening to the replay, we would love for you to share your comments. So just do hashtag replay. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, but this is really going to be aimed at current seniors who are in the middle of the process of college uh, admissions. All right. So invite them to come in. Now that doesn't mean my juniors. Uh, and, and underclassmen, parents of juniors and underclassmen, you can't attend because this is definitely going to be information you need to know and understand for when your time comes. Because this piece that we're going to be talking about and even some of the nuggets and the gems I'm going to drop, it's going to be more beneficial to you as you prepare to go through this process. So, you know what? This is open and it's going to be apropos for everybody. So, start tagging every college bound family you know and tell them to jump on live right now because Tamika L. Williamson, the college prep boss, is about to break down college admittance, college acceptance letters, and financial aid packages. Now, I can do this in multiple segments, but I'm going to hit the main pieces right now, and we may come back and do you know, part two, part three, something like that. We'll just see. Depends on how I feel. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. I think my my guest, she was here, and I'm not sure if she um, lost connection. So let's see. If she did, that's fine. We'll get started and we'll plug her in once she comes back. Once she comes back. Um, so... Let me uh, let me just start with this then while we're waiting on her to come back in. Um, let's talk about college admittance. So many students right now are excited because they got notification, good, bad, or ugly. You either got a notification that said, congratulations, you have been accepted, or you may have gotten something that said, you... Uh, you are waitlisted or you didn't get accepted into to your top choice or into one one or more of your schools hopefully you applied to more than one school you know we don't put all our eggs in one basket and um when we do we are doing early decision or early action and that is, that's part of your strategy and you're intentional about that because that's the school you're looking to go to and you understand the risk that comes with taking that course of action. I'm not about to get into that piece because that's a whole strategy. And um, people pay me to give them that type of details. But whichever category you fell in, um, if you applied early enough in the process, you've already received 
um, you've already received notification on your admission status. So students are starting to share. I got into that accepted. It's always exciting to see those videos. Um, but you know, I'm that type of person. I, I, I celebrate them then, but then I'm like, okay, the rubber meets the road is when we get into, can we pay for it or not? So that's some of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, so hopefully you, uh, if you did something like early decision, like this example, we're going to talk about here for one of our scholars, the early decision, they got accepted. They also got their financial aid package. So we're going to use it as a teaching moment to break down what it is you're looking for and what you need to do next, because you can't get all caught up in the excitement of getting accepted. Make sure you read all the details because it's going to, um, your more comprehensive uh, acceptance packages are going to have next steps. And those next steps comes with deadlines. Please hear me. If you miss that deadline, you're going to miss your opportunity. So you cannot miss the deadline. So you want to make sure you are, um, you're on top of that. I'm, I'm, you know, I cannot type uh, and talk at the same time. You cannot miss those deadlines. So I'm going to point out some things that you want to pay attention to, you want to look for. Uh, same thing with financial aid packages. Unfortunately, there's no one set way in, in terms of how they're going to be structured, how they're going to be delivered to your inbox. But um, you want to make sure, again, you read through all the details. Some are easier to read, while others may be a little bit more complicated. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it may be kind of confusing. If there's something you never, you don't understand, make sure you reach out to the admissions office or the financial aid office and ask the questions immediately so that you're clear and you don't miss any deadlines and you don't uh, accept something that you didn't want to accept as well. So you want to make sure you are clear about those pieces as well. All right. So let's... Uh, Huh. Okay. She says she's in here, but I don't see her. All right. Yeah, I know. Okay. You said I'm, you're back. I don't see you in the room. Ha ha ha. Y'all know technology is always fun. Mm -mm. Last time we did this and had guests, it, it did the same thing for us. I mean, it did the same thing and missed. Um, let's see, stop cam. All right, we're going to try to troubleshoot this, everyone. Ah, there we go. Yes. Okay. So she's back in. So we're going to join. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right when we started, the entire building lost internet connectivity. Like they couldn't have been, they couldn't have timed that anymore perfectly. You know it. It never fails. <laughs> I mean, to this morning we were uh we were trying to do our morning prayer, and of course. Her Zoom, she couldn't even get in her own Zoom. It wouldn't work. We couldn't get in. Everything was messed up, locked out. So, you know, whenever you're getting ready to especially share some great informative information, you're doing something great, it's always something that's trying to distract you. But, hey, ain't nothing stopping us. I know the devil is alive. We're going to get this no, information right. out. <laughs> we're going to get it out because we're going we gonna to free some folks in 2023. <laughs> free your mind. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so and the rest will follow. I get a little giddy at times. <laughs> All right. So we have our special guest with us. Um, so I'm going to ask Miss Jennifer to just share a little bit about who she is. And then we're going to jump into uh, our example because we've already, I've, I've given you some basic context 
around what we're talking about and some and uh college missions but let let's let's uh let me help let me uh introduce let you uh know a little bit more about my guests i'm getting all tongue-tied <laughs> no problem hello everyone my name is jennifer barrett and i am the proud mother of two beautiful teenagers <laughs> two teenage daughters and um I found Ms. Tamika through Facebook, a Facebook ad, and I think she's just a godsend. And I have been just utilizing all of her tips and strategies. Like, I cannot thank, I just, let me just say, I can't thank her enough because she makes this information available at no cost. Like, these are free tips and things that she gives. And she's truly passionate about helping our children get this college game under our bells and go to school for like free. <laughs> In addition to being a mother of a teenager, I'm also a travel agent. I have my own travel company and I specialize in um, group cruising. And one of the things I do is a senior cruise. Like I'm getting ready to do one. And this is kind of like how we had our conversation kind of start because I have all these seniors who are traveling together. That This is their last time they'll be able to travel with, with their friend group before they had to be young adults and all of them have gone and they most of them have done early um was it early early accept, acceptance mm, and, early, or early decision, decision right early decision and but they got these packages and they're like okay now what <laughs> what does this mean do we have to accept what they have given us and some of them is, is really good some people who did not follow the process and i heard her say don't miss the deadline because one of the students missed the deadline of submitting their FOSFA and the CSS file, and they got no money, and they are in need, and they got nothing because mm -hmm. they missed that deadline. So please take heed to what she is telling you. Like, just, I cannot speak enough about Ms. Tamika because she, she really has helped me go through this process and so we're here to ask some questions about some, one of the students that actually got there. Um, it, it seemed like it was really good to us, but we don't know all the questions and some of the things that we need to add. Like they gave me a couple of questions to, to get answered, but it was like really great, but we listened. Well, not we, let me just say this, because the moment I got this information from the first time I met her, it was on her one of her free broadcasts, I immediately sent it out to other parents all the parents that went on my cruise, all the other parents that are in my child's high school. I said, listen, no, this lady right here, when she says that she is the college prep boss, she is, and she's providing us nuggets and gems, and she's doing it at no cost. Like, I can't, I cannot express enough how grateful I am for meeting her and for the information that she has imparted. And in fact, I listened. <laughs> and now, so that, that's the part right there, because... Uh, I'm like, yeah, we have clients. We have clients who invest, who get to experience me at a, a, a greater level. But I remember one of my other clients, she said, if people just pay attention to the nuggets you drop for free, it will carry them a long way <laughs> if they're listening. Because I do drop nuggets and gems um, that if you just applied that or if, heck, if you just got the book and went through the book and got the nuggets and combined it together, it would get you a lot further than you trying to do it by yourself and trying to figure it out. But hey. so all of the parents listen to you. I, like I said, I made them, I sent them links and they all listen. And just, I think everybody that everybody on the cruise listened to you that the other parent that didn't get any money, they didn't follow your direction. <laughs> And just about every person that's going on the cruise, they did early decision. And so that's when this came up. Uh, one of the mothers was like, okay, I got this. But what does it mean? I was like, look, let me take it to the boss lady. <laughs> she knows what to do. So I am here to ask questions and to get some more guidance from you. Listen, I am 100. I, I will be your biggest cheerleader because, like you said, the free information the free information is you can't it's priceless you cannot put so listen if you know the free stuff is good so you know what's going to happen when you become one of her paid clients and is it worth the money every bit because if they were able to receive this kind of um return on a free investment can you only imagine what your return on your investment of paying for her services, like you get her one-on-one -on -one, and it's not a free 30 minute blue. 
you get to speak to her and have her guide you personally. So I think it's very, it's very much worth the money that you would invest to get her expert advice and handhold it. Like, yes. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. I'm gonna have to hire you to uh to <laughs> to do something. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get to it because we're gonna let everybody um get to let me see. I know I gotta change all these different see I'm try I got real fancy. And so um let's do I want to share my screen. I think that's okay. gonna be the easiest way for me to do this. And let me get my questions that they I have written down here because they have certain questions. They're like, we need to know what this means. <laughs> Can you bring your pad, please? Yeah, thank you. Listen, we're there. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't think I can do that like that. Cause that's, I think I'm going to have to do this like this. All right. I thought we just going to do it like this because I, I, I want to make sure I can see and okay. see if anybody come in with some comments. Okay, so I just put it in. I put it in a different type of order. I don't even know if this was the right order, the initial order that it was in. I'm trying to see how. I don't I think they care. They just need the answers to the questions they have. <laughs> okay, so it didn't change there. See, this is the engineer side of me. I want to. I want it to look a certain way. <laughs> and, and um. Okay, you know what? We just gonna roll with this the way you need it. Uh, okay, that makes me better. Makes me feel better. Okay, so as I stated earlier, you know, financial aid packages they come in all shapes, form, and fashions. There's no one set way. I've seen some that were very, very confusing and convoluted, and I'm like, why do y'all make this so complicated? And I've seen some that was very, very simple. Uh, this one, I believe, I think this is a very comprehensive one because it is informative in multiple ways. So what we're going to do, we're going to break it out. I, I highlighted some things and uh, we'll talk about it. We'll see if this addresses some of the questions that that you had, uh, that you, um, you got on your list as well. So first, let me say congratulations to this scholar and to all the scholars who've already, who were early to the game because y'all if you've been following me for a while for years you've heard me say the early bird gets the worm in college admissions process timing is everything deadlines are critical you must start this process early those who started earlier have a greater chance of getting top choice and i'm about to point out i'm gonna point out some things as we go through this to help you understand coach tamika she mean what she say she know what she's talking about i ain't making this stuff up so congratulations to those scholars who got the, who got into their top schools or who got the accept, multiple acceptance letters. Congratulations. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road. Can you afford to go there? Because getting admitted is one thing. <laughs> getting it paid for is a whole nother beast within itself. Thankfully, this scholar right here, ha, they got their stuff paid for. <laughs> this is what we want to see. We want to see our uh, college paid for. Now, yes, we talk about college for free, going to college for free, yada, yada, yada. And what people don't understand is our goal is to get you as close to free as possible. Going for free is not always possible. But when you don't, it has to make sense. So you've heard me say, if it doesn't make dollars and cents, then it doesn't make sense. It has to make sense so that when we look at that, we look at it in terms of proportionality because 95% of our families have been able to send their kids to college without debt. But there are situations where you cannot avoid it. So does it make sense? So here we have this financial aid offer. This scholar got accepted to American University. That is a phenomenal school. So you know what? Yeah, I'm going to pull out the... Because <laughs> let me tell you, to get accepted into a school like American University, that is no easy feat. That is no easy feat. It is an excellent school. And you can tell it's an excellent school just by the price tag associated with it. Because I don't know about you, but $77,278, that is per year. Now, you know, do we need to do a Medea moment? 
per year. <laughs> How much does that come up to? Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and do it. My engineering brain is not as uh, quick as it used to be. So let's just talk about four years. Now, remember, y'all know I always say students graduate at least. I mean, we plan for five, but we're going to just for the sake of this, we're going to say four, 77,278 times four. Times four. Let me tell you, $309,112. Are you sitting on that kind of money? Because if you're listening and you have that kind of money where you can afford to write this type of check every year, then yeah, this message is not for you. But I don't know too many families. I mean, if anybody who could do that, they're probably about but maybe 3% of the world can do that. About 3%, maybe a little bit more than that. But majority of us, we can't afford to do that. So you have to start this process earlier, sooner than later. But 77,278, I'm not going to go off on that tangent. So here you see this package is broken down in by default in the spring semester. So you always want to look at, understand the numbers, and you want to look at, what does the breakdown, what is it comprised of? Because I always say, when you get the package and you get the offer, don't just look at the total offer amount. The total offer amount is $71,895. So out of $77,278, they, this scholar got $71,895. So they basically got most of it paid for. I'm trying to get, I'm about to, I, I like to deal with numbers. So 93%. Wow. 93% wow. of the bill is covered. So yes, that's something to get excited about, but we don't always, we don't want to just stop there. We want to understand what is, what does the breakdown look like? See, I don't know if I can do some drawing or something like that uh, while we're doing it. So, so what does the breakdown look like? So this is where you want to go and look at this piece right here. Okay, this is doing too much. What 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 is this breakdown? What is this breakdown? So we have a grant. So just for those who don't know, I just want to make sure everybody understands grant means you don't have to pay it back. It's free money. So this is a need-based grant. And then they got a supplemental grant in there. Then uh, the scholar has a estimated Pell grant. So when you look at the Pell per semester, um, look like they're getting about the maximum Pell for the year, about 60 but about $6,800. And I know there's a push to increase the pale, but they're getting maximum uh, pale. Well, we keep going down the line. We see there's some loans in here. All right, so let me help you understand this <laughs> loan breakdown. Um, you got a federal direct subsidized loan and then you have an unsubsidized loan. So we are definitely like, we prefer no loans. But again, as I stated earlier, sometimes loans are part of the process. I know one of my scholars uh, uh, went to Occidental. So I don't know what Occidental is these days, but this was Occidental price about seven years ago. No, no, no. How long ago? No, he graduated. It was about five years ago. This was Occidental price about five years ago. <laughs> and Occidental's practice because remember, I said every school funds different. You got to understand how the school funds, what their practices are around financial aid, and uh, how do what type of funding do they give need based versus merit based, or a combination of the two, all those different things. Well, Occidental's uh, premise was students, every scholar who comes through their school, they should have skin in the game. So when they cover 100%, part of that percentage includes a student loan. It's just a very small portion of their overall bill. When we look at this out of this total amount, you're talking about student loan. Um, That's like almost $3,000. Yeah, plus 
I had it in my head earlier and I lost the number. So 5,500. I knew it was, it was about, I said about 5,500 because actually, yeah, 5,500. I'm mixing that up with Pell Grant. Like, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So $5,500. So out of 35948 $5,500 is all they pretty much, you consider they have to come, you got to come out of pocket because that means you got to pay this loan back. So that's why I say come out of pocket, uh, because ideally, hey, I would say start paying this loan back as soon as possible. But uh, may, may I ask the question? So that's one of the questions that parents had. They're like, first of all, what is the difference between? OK, so subsidized mean nobody's helping you. No. So, yeah, so, I was going there and I got. OK, I got sorry. You're good. You brought me back because I got <laughs> into the percentage of the ratio. I went to the ratio first versus the, uh, defining it. So the ratio is very small, but we're going to come back to that. Subsidized versus unsubsidized. If you get a student loan, the goal is to be able to get a subsidized student loan. What that means is your interest is being subsidized. The government is paying your interest while you're in school. Because so it's a straight loan. It's a straight loan. Well, no, no, no. It's not a straight loan. They're paying your interest while you're in school. So instead, so... So can she start paying? You can. can. Seventeen can you can't start paying this back now, or you like, can. You don't okay. have to wait. Yeah, you don't have to wait. But seventeen fifty or the thirty five hundred dollar portion, the government is paying the interest of that loan that's accruing while they're in college. Versus the thou the two thousand dollar portion, the thousand dollars per semester interest. As soon as you say yes, the interest is going to start accruing. So should they be paying that loan back first so that the interest is not? Yeah, like how I would, if, yeah if, you are, if you're prioritizing the loans, I will pay that one back first because the interest will start accruing while they're in college. And uh, the student loan, they'll send you a statement that says, here's how much interest um, you've accrued. And it gives you the option to pay it. Most people don't pay it. Okay, so. Most people just wait until they graduate. So. Oh, look, I have my own question on this, but like, let me get back to the list that the parents said. <laughs> okay, so that was one, could they start paying that loan? And the other one was, can they, I guess they were like, can we not accept the loan since we got to pay it anyway? But having that loan, that just means that they don't have to pay it until they graduate. Is that what that means? Or is that loan due every year? That's what they wanted to understand. Okay, so whenever you get a federal student loan, Federal, I'm, I'm very clear about designating this loan because there are different types of student loans out there. Federal student loans. You don't start paying that back until, one, you either graduate from uh, college, you'll start paying it back, six, you're, you're expected to start paying it back six months. They give you six months from the time you graduate to when your first payment is going to be due. Or you stop going to school. Mm. Because if you stop going to school and don't graduate, then your loan payment is going to kick in. So if they are sick and have to sit out a semester, do, do they get kicked out then? Um, so in that type of situation, that's where you can apply for a forbearance. You can let them, there's a special circumstance on why they're out. Uh, you're going to start school back up. So that is something you will work out with your lender. But now, there are options for that. The family is going to owe $6,000 regardless because the 77 minus 71, that's $6,000. When do they have to, do they have to pay that be, before they go to school? Or is that something that's paid throughout school? It so depends how, on the school. Okay. Um. So my other scholar who's at AU, uh, we were just, I talked to the mom, we were joking about that the other day. Um. Uh, she was like, yeah, I got the, uh, I got the statement from them uh, on paying my bill. Cause I think she's just going to go ahead and just pay uh, the whole year. Cause she was like, just breaking it up. It just didn't make any sense. She's just going to pay it off. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but, well, they, they prepared for it. They had 529s in place hmm. that uh, allowed them to be able to have the money uh, built up to be able to write those checks for each of their students. Um, so if you don't have that, what do, then what is there, that recourse? So if you don't have it, then you need to talk to the school to find out what their payment options are, because every school mm -hmm. is different. Some schools, they don't have any payment options. They want the money all up front. 
at the beginning of the semester and they'll give you a certain period on when you got to have it paid. Or you can have um, schools who have payment plans where you can actually, they'll tell you how much your amount is that you have to pay each month. Um, so you want to talk to the school. If you don't have the, the $6,000 difference or $5,000 difference, then you want to talk to the school and work with the school. But this is where I tell students, hey, buckle down, getting applying for scholarships and getting scholarships, yes, it's competitive, but buckle down and get some get busy with applying for scholarships. Check out the, any local, check your network out for local scholarships. That's your low-hanging fruit. Look for local scholarships and apply. Of course, apply for the other big ones, but if you hadn't been serious about applying for scholarships, it needs to be your number one job right now because this is a gap you could fill with just local scholarships or at least bring it down half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, because you can get some local scholarships, $1,000 here, $500 there, is you can at least uh, come up with about $3,000. But this, this is different. Gap. Yeah, this is a gap that's, that can be filled. It's, it's when folks have 10, 15, $20,000 gaps that they're trying to do GoFundMe campaigns and all that stuff that just don't work. Oh, um, so the other question that they ask is, is, is this guaranteed every year or is it based off because it's a need based, it, it, it's, a, it's a grant, so they don't have to pay it back. But does the school get this every year? And what happens if, if because it's need based, what happens if their financial status change? Like what happens if they make more money or they make less money? Does that number determine what it is for the next year or is this guaranteed every year? Nothing is guaranteed in the college admissions world. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, 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 nothing is guaranteed. Oh, and I'm sorry. When you said this talk to the school, is that the student that makes the appointment with the school and is that through the financial aid office or parent and student? Because I know sometimes they just want the student. Well, most schools, period. They want to talk to the school, the student. The student is mm -hmm. their client. So this is where students have to demonstrate their leadership skills mm -hmm. uh, and have the conversation themselves. Parents, you mm -hmm. can be there to coach them, but you got to teach them how to fly. That's right. That's right. So I always suggest the students do it and the parents, you just help them prepare for it. But you're going to contact the, because uh, it gives you direction down here. If you got questions, contact your financial aid counselor. Uh, so work with them on what to do. Um, so I'm trying to figure out why I can't. Um, hey, should I, they be asking for anything else? Or oh, this is great. They don't need to. Ask, they shouldn't ask for anything else. No other assistance or scholarships from the school. Well, I mean, you can all ain't nothing wrong with asking. A closed mouth get a closed mouth does not get fed. So you can always ask. Are there other scholarship or there other opportunities um, where I can get more money? Oh, you know, so does that include the board as well? So that money includes them staying on campus and the meal plan. Yeah, so this is uh so it's um so there was two different breakdowns. This is the breakdown of your package. And this is the breakdown of the amount, the COA, the cost of attendance. So they break down cost of attendance if you're living on campus versus if you're not living on campus. So that way you can see what the money is because you asked me the question, is it guaranteed and all that? So when you read the details, it tells you about your eligibility. One is based off of your FAFSA. You have to do the FAFSA every year. So if you make more money, mm -hmm. then you know there's a chance that your aid is going to decrease. So you want to uh, understand what their threshold is that can cause you to um, have decreased aid. You can ask the financial aid department that question. What is their... What's their range? Because need-based schools like American University, they have a sliding scale on what percentage they cover based on where you fall within the income bracket. So find out what their income uh, range is so that way you'll know. But so what should the student ask, the financial aid office, what is their range for need-based? Yeah, what is their salary ranges that determines the percentage of, of aid that's awarded? So, okay. for example... Most schools who are need-based funded schools, um, you know, they look at if your uh, adjusted gross income is under sixty thousand. Uh, some schools will co will cover one hundred percent. Some schools will cover ninety eight percent. Some will cover ninety five percent. So it can be 
income less than 60,000, they cover up to 98%. And then the next range can be uh, up to 90%. So you got to know what that range is because every school is different. Because it tells you right here, your eligibility determination is based on need-based financial aid and it's based on the completion of the CSS profile and the FAFSA. So you have to do that every year. And then it's, it also explains the, the merit-based uh, process, what that looks like. And then it also goes further to tell you this aid, this amount that you, that they were, that was, that's broken down here, that's awarded is also based on full-time enrollment. Mm. You cannot drop your status from full-time to part-time. If you dropped, and this is at any school, if you drop to a part-time status, your aid amount ch uh, changes and you likely will owe the school some money. Oh, wow. So you have to make sure you maintain a minimum of 12 credit hours. That's why I always, and I, here's a nugget moment, <laughs> I encourage students, you never take 12 credit hours. 15. You always take at least 15 because if you need to drop a class, you do not drop a class at drop session and, and it takes you down to part-time status. That is a nightmare you do not want to entertain because you will finish that semester in the red on the school money because you're going to have to pay back the money that's been paid. Wow. You have to pay all of it back because you want a full time. You're going to pay, you're gonna have to pay the difference between a full time student and a part time student cost. Oh, I know that parent is going to make sure <laughs> they full time. Now, well, you don't want to fail no classes neither. So that's a whole nother conversation. But oh, oh. Yeah, they have here if they, so they got the seventy one thousand. If they decided to stay off campus, do they keep the difference in that money, and does so, it get applied back to that loan? Uh, so what you got to do is find out from the school what what you can keep. Um, how much of that will be impacted? Because that's going to again vary from school to school. There was a school I'm not going to say no name where. Uh, the students moved off campus and the aid, the scholarship money they were awarded was earmarked only for students who lived on campus. Oh, wow. So they had a gap the next semester because they didn't know. And these students couldn't start back in school because they thought they were going to have that money. And it was like a $10,000 gap and they didn't wow. have the $10,000 to come out of pocket. Wow. Because they moved off campus. So we look, we can say, nope, you got to stay on campus. On this. So that's what the parent wants to know. Well, they could stay home then. If that's yeah. the case, they could stay home. But no, that's not. You yeah, so you got to you gotta ask the school, yeah, what are the other contingencies? Because there could be other things that's not here. So that's the student has to ask all those questions to the financial aid office. The student should ask. I mean, the parent can ask, but it, it goes better. It goes a long, it, it goes a long way when the student asks. The student needs to get into the business of establishing relationships with those key decision makers at that institution. They are the gatekeeper. That's another gym right there. That's that that's is another gym. gym. Yeah, mm -hmm. we teach our we teach our our scholars to do that. Uh so that's another gym and I'm not going further with that one because that's going to be, that's a, that's a, people pay me for that type of stuff. Well, that was, that's a paid gym. <laughs> so just to go back to, well, no, we covered your question. Um, mm -hmm. What's, um, so the basic, they had the question about the 69, could they keep the difference? They want to know, can they stop paying on the loans? And they want to know, can they not take the loan? Can they not accept the loan, but still be able to get the rest of the money? Well, you know what? Here's the thing. I just thought about something you said. Could they keep the difference? No, you're likely not going to keep the difference. Um, they're only going to give you what you need. When you're dealing with need-based funded schools, they're going to give you what you need. And it's actually stated here as well. Now, if it was merit-based money, that's a whole different ballgame. Merit-based money is treated differently from need-based money. And the last one was the work study. Do they assign them a work or do they or does the student have to go find a job? But I guess that's the student need to ask the school. Yeah, the school, the school usually uh, assigns the work. And yeah, they assign like, where they assign them. Yeah, they assign them to work study. It's usually on campus. Most cases. 
Yeah, it's not gonna be something crazy. It's like well, say they you know, sign up to the cafeteria, they're like, Well, I really don't want to be around all those people. COVID, can I do something else? Well, here's the thing. Let me let me okay. So so babies, hear me. Yeah, like snatch them up. <laughs> Beggars can't be choosy. First off, work study is a it is a luxury. Mm. You know how many students would kill to have work study? Everybody don't get work study. There are limited work study spots, period, because that's federally funded. Mm. Everybody don't get work study. People will kill to get work study. So you can't be no beggar. You can't be choosy about where you do your work study at. It is only about 10 hours a week. And so do they get the money and have to pay it to the school or do they just work off these hours? So they work. Every school is different, but typically it's like, okay, you you report to wherever your work study is. It's, it's like a job. You got to show up because if you don't show up and whoever you are assigned to, the assignment, who's over the assignment of where you're assigned to, if they don't sign off and say that this student showed up, you're not going to get that money. Mm. And so that means you award it at the end of the year? Huh? It's not awarded until the end of the semester? Yeah, it's awarded over time throughout mm. that semester. Okay. So if you don't show up the whole semester, then that means at the end of the semester, you're going to owe the school some money because you didn't earn that work study. So that means you got to, that means you have money that you got to balance. So this is interesting. If, look, this is not on their paper. Look, I'm asking these questions. <laughs> if they have the work study and they work off what they owe, but they have more hours. Do they then get paid or it's still not a paid gig? They will not work more hours than what's allowed. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank they you. They only work the amount of hours that's allowed. I'm trying to put on their hat because I'm like, that's what I would have asked. <laughs> yeah. They will okay, only work the amount of hours that they are allowed. Okay. Great. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Um, so just to tie into your question too, um, can they take the, if they move out campus, can they get the balance? No, with need-based funded money, with need-based funded funds, you only, they the money is only going to be applied based on need. And when you look at this reporting outside scholarship, yeah. see this, this whole little section right here, everybody needs to make sure they understand this section. This, you need to know this at every school because every school handles this differently. But more so in need-based funded schools, when you get out money from outside sources, you have to report it. And that's what it is saying, because when you accept this financial aid package, you're saying you're going to adhere to these rules and these guidelines. Because And that means if you violate any of these rules and guidelines, that means you uh, you going you gonna to run the risk of losing the, scop the opportunity. Well, do they take money back because they got a scholarship? Yeah, they can. And that's what they say in this paragraph right here. It could, they don't say that they will. It says additional aid may reduce the amount of aid that's in your offer. So would that be like the loans come off? Do you get to choose that or they get to decide? So typically, if you keep the loan, what tip, what most schools would do is if you get a that would be one of the first things they can they, they'll take off it mm -hmm. depends but most schools they'll take off loans first now once you start exceeding the the uh student loan amount you have then that is where you can start seeing them decreasing like the uh the au grant you can see that starting to decrease wow so they so they could probably get up to all the long. So would they take off the work study too? Or we want to keep the work study? You like, want to keep the work study. So when okay. you look at prioritize, 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 uh, prior, if you start prioritizing the money, mm -hmm. I can't even say it. <laughs> uh, your ranking order of prioritization of the funds. The first thing that I will work towards replacing are student loans. Because you got to pay that back. Everything else on there, you don't have to pay back. So they get, say, for instance, they get money. What is that loan? What was it? Uh, 2000 something for the loans. Yeah, so you say got, they, it's a total of $5,500 over the course of the whole year. Okay. 
Oh, that's right, because it's both semesters, right? Yeah, I don't know why I'm just looking at one semester. Okay, so say they get a six thousand dollar loan, so it's five hundred dollars extra. Can I mean not loan scholarship? Can that scholarship go towards? Because see, they still owe money. They still owe like six thousand dollars. So and and that's what they'll look at. So and so in so you can get scholarship. So you can get scholarship money. So if you got six thousand dollars, the first first and foremost, that money is going to bridge the gap. So you got to prioritize gap first. You got to fill the gap, and then student loan will come after that. Well, who does they the got, prioritizing? Does the family get to say, "Okay, I, I received ten thousand dollars in yes, you have to work with money"? The school. You have to work with the school to okay, find out okay. how they handle that. So when, when I get the money in, my their job is just to report it. You how it report it, uh-huh. and that's where you ask them those questions. I got this amount of money. How will this impact my aid? Even though I still have a gap that, well, they got a six thousand dollar gap. They got to pay anyway. Yeah, but you got to look at this. It doesn't make sense for them to decrease your package if you have a gap. Right. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, they're not going to do that. And that doesn't okay. make sense. That's not business. But we just need to report it so they know that that parent didn't have to pay out of pocket, that they got a scholarship. No, that ain't, what they, that ain't why they want you to report it. Oh. <laughs> they could care less if you pay the money. If you don't pay the money, then another school, another student will come in and take your spot. Got you. you so they don't care. They, they ain't worried about that. Mm-hmm. Somebody will come in and take your spot and pay that money because there's somebody who wants this spot. Mm. They only accepted what 30% this year, a little bit about 30%. So really? I'm, sure there's, I'm sure there's students on waiting lists mm. and hoping somebody uh declines, but you did early decisions, so you gotta remember you signed an early decision contract that said you are obligated to pay in this amount. Wow. So what, so here's another rabbit hole question now. Well, what happens if the student is said, yes, we're going to do early decision here. We're going to pay. And then they can't. Mm. Read their contract agreement and find out. Um, that That's a whole, uh, that's a whole piece of confusion that you just don't want to deal with because you can't apply to no other school. You will not be able to go to another school until this until they release you from early decision. And it's at their discretion if they release you. Really? Because, yes, you got when you go early decision, that's why I tell families, if when you make that decision, you got to understand the risk of taking that decision because you are signing a legal document, a legal contract that says, if I am accepted. I will come to your school, which is why they gave you a package and everything right now, which is why your deadline is January 15th. So they want to make sure, okay, I got it. So this is this is recorded, right? Because I'm like, I don't remember all this. Let me, <laughs> let me I had to tell the tell the uh the parent to get back online to listen to all your answers, but that's good. So early decision you have to go to that school so you can't even shop around like oh they gave me this money let me go to this other school and see they paying more that's it you signed up so you gotta go yeah you gotta uh because every school you got different types of early admissions you Mm -hmm. got early action you got early decisions and you have different layers of them and um you gotta make sure you know what you are signing up for when you take these uh paths because early decision is a binding process again meaning you must you you um you signed an agreement that said you would attend this college because you took the early decision route early action is the one where it can be binding non-binding it depends but yes read those contractual agreements read the details i had this conversation a few years ago with one of my scholars who wanted to do this and I, and they said, well, in the, uh, in the agreement, cause they're an attorney, they said it's based on need. Well, need ain't by your definition. Need is based on the school's definition of need. So what you think your need definition is and what they think, cause remember they got all your stuff, CSS profile <laughs> and your FAFSA. 
they determine and define that. Okay, so, thank you. Yes, ma'am. So that's, we got to read all that. Um, here's something else I highlighted that I wanted to point out here. Um, first, I'll do this one, the financial aid offer. You, um, <laughs> this is going back to timing. Why it's important to, to start this process sooner than later. Early bar gets the worm. Uh, so first off, well, let me, excuse me, I'll just go in order. This first circle, because they probably missed this. The parent probably missed this. As an early decision student, you are guaranteed one of your first three choices of residence hall. So the fact that you went early decision, you made a commitment to say, if I'm accepted, I'm coming to your school with absolute uh, certainty and I'm good with that. They have a targeted number that they know based on early decision who's coming. So with that, we're going to reward you for being prepared, for being aware, for being confident in knowing what you want to do with your future. We're going to guarantee you the one of your first three choices of residence hall. And they break that down. But your housing deposit has to be returned by January 15th. It gives you a deadline, 2023. That's in a couple of weeks. You can't miss that deadline because you can't be like, well, they said it was going to guarantee it. Uh, no, you had your own part. Housing deposit <laughs> due by January 15th, not January 16th or the 17th. So that's a benefit of starting early, applying early. Secondly, financial aid offer. Look how they break this down. Students who, com who completed their financial aid and uh, students who completed their applications, their admissions applications for financial aid. Hold on, wait a minute, I'm sorry. I'm adding my own stuff in. You, you <laughs> have completed your admissions application and of course your financial aid and you did it early enough, then you were able to, and you did it by November 15th, the priority deadline, then this is what why this scholar was allowed to get their offer concurrently with their admission decision. For those of you who submitted your stuff after November 15th, that include November 16th, just one day after. <laughs> it will be reviewed in order in which they were received. Again, early bird gets the worm. It's based on the order in which it's received. So the longer you wait, so those of you who are still sitting around uh, pontificating about what school you what applications you're gonna submit. I'm gonna submit them by January 1. Just know that there's a whole lot of students who've already submitted their stuff way before you. Schools have budgets, they have a certain amount of money they're gonna they they plan to award every year. Once that pot is done, then they prepare for the next year. So there's no guarantees. They're not just holding money, waiting on you. No. So we can't keep delaying this process. So I wanted to throw that point out there. Um, but you definitely got to look at this. You got to read through it. Uh, again, nothing is uh, guaranteed. It talks about the duration and the renewal of award. You got to reapply every year with your FAFSA. But you also have to make sure you're in good standing at the university. So you're going to class. You're not flunking classes because if you get your GPA, if your GPA goes below, uh, I think it's a 2.0. I'm drawing a blank now. You will lose your financial aid. If you go on academic probation, your money goes bye bye. Wow. Yeah. So you still have to perform. Ain't nobody paying for you to come in and not perform. Yeah. That ain't happening. This is so, this is good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to get these questions answered. I hope it helps somebody too. Yes, I hope so too. Um, and you asked me about billing. So they have something in here on, on billing timeline. So you definitely want to look at that. 
uh, cause you know, East, you pay a semester at a time. You don't pay, you don't necessarily pay the whole amount up front, but it tells you when yeah, it says July or August or something like that. Is that what it says? Yeah. For the fall 2023 term, you will receive your finalized bill in early July. That will be due in early August. 30 days. And you will be responsible to pay the charges that remain after your financial aid has been subtracted. You will pay for books separately. Um, but it said they covered books. They said they covered books at the top because it had housing, food. No, no, no. That was, your, that was your cost of attendance. This piece right here. Yeah, don't, 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 don't confuse this. This is the breakdown of cost of attendance of how much it costs to attend the school. So what they do, what they did was they separated direct billable costs and indirect costs. So your direct cost is everything related to school, room and board, tuition. Um, they give them a, they get a Metro pass, you know, AU's in the middle of the heart of DC. So they give them a Metro pass. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, not give you paying for that. There's a fee. right, 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 right. <laughs> so this part is part of an the item. Yeah, <laughs> your indirect costs because cost of attendance they estimate everything. They bring everything out. So books, transportation, um, just to, just other general type of transportation, personal expenses. You know, you gotta wash clothes. You gotta buy toiletries. Because they want you to be prepared for these uh, additional expenses that you're gonna that the student is gonna have. Now the loan fees, I don't quite know what that is because there's usually some type of fee that the school may have, um, which sometimes is just lumped in in this big old tuition number, um, lab fees, all that kind of stuff. But um, but yeah, that doesn't mean that they're covering books. They're telling you about how much you need to. Uh, estimate your your book costs will be and that's going to vary and so that's in on. addition to the seventy seven thousand. they they're gonna have to pay at least another eight thousand uh what does it say 800 for books yep they're estimating your books could be about eight hundred dollars so here's another question what happens if you get scholarships after you make your payment do you still you still have to report all those you need to huh? report it mm -hmm. Do never do not because if they because here's the thing what happens uh what folks don't understand because I already know folks gonna be trying to pull fast ones and there's there's a way to ro to work around it but I'm not giving y'all that nugget uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm not giving y'all that nugget but um most organizations especially your bigger uh, scholarship organizations they make the check out to you and the school to the scholar mm -hmm. in the school. so the school's going to always know. In those cases, because the, the scholarship check is going to come directly from the organization to the school. In their name, in the student's name. In the student's name. So they don't just take that money and do anything with it. It's actually for school. So that's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah, And then and the school will apply it to their account. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. Thank you. This, this was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So you want to... Um, so at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, there was there was a lot in this, and there was a lot more we could have we could have talked about. But the fundamental lesson is this: stop procrastinating. Start the process earlier, sooner than later. Um, deadlines. You can't just miss deadlines. Period. You can't just say, I'll get to it tomorrow. I know the deadline today, but I'll just do it tomorrow. Okay. You Then you deal with the ramifications of that <laughs> decision. All right. So deadlines are critical. Starting again, I, I just can't overemphasize that you got to start the process sooner. Those who apply early are prepared to apply early. You are in position to reap the the the, ben, the the greatest level of the benefits than those who are applied later in the game. I'm not saying everybody do early decision. That is not for everybody. I I I rarely have clients do early decision. I know situations where it makes sense, um, but for the most part, at minimum, early action 
apply early in the process if the school doesn't have early early uh process again you still want to apply sooner than later so you can always apply earlier you just can't apply late you can apply late you're just going to be lumped in with general uh so in this case like with uh, au if you applied after november 15 which was their deadline for early decision their early uh their early deadlines period then you're going to be lumped in with general admission so yeah. What happens is they may have said our incoming freshman class, we're going to take 70% of them from those who, who apply early decision because they know what their 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 percentage uh, of applicants are forecasted to be every year on um, who's going to apply early decision. So they can make that decision. We'll take 70% of our early uh, of our fresh incoming freshman class from the early decision pool and the remaining 30% will come from the general application pool. Well, I think the number one thing to do in the process is listen <laughs> to what you say to do. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then everything else will follow. Because I do know um, one of the students did not do uh, apply to do the early decision. I mean, they applied for early decision, but they didn't do the FAFSA in time. And they didn't meet that. I guess it was the November 15th deadline. And they got absolutely no funding. And that didn't make a lick of sense. You basically defeated the benefit of during early decision. The FAFSA opens October 1st. So you basically limited your options unnecessarily with nothing. Because now you don't know what, I mean, they'll send them a package. They'll get a package. It just may not, they don't know what it could have been. And that's the right. thing. It could, have been, uh, a, it, it could, it could be a difference of twenty thousand dollars or more. You just don't know because you didn't make the deadline. So now they got to go with more people for a little small amount of money. Yeah, they got to. Um, they're going to be left with whatever's left versus being in the priority pool where they had the school. Uh, every year, it's just like a business. I know, you know, uh, businesses define their, their strategic plan or whatever their plan is for the next year. And they know, okay, schools know how many students we plan to bring in, how much money we plan to award. Uh, this, this percentage of this pot is going to go to this group here. We know these targeted demographics um, are uh, going to be our, uh, our hook targets for admissions this year because we need more women we need more this we need more that they define whatever the, what those goals are and it drives and dictates their recruitment process and what they're looking for and once they hit their metrics and they check off the boxes and all those things then they're good see why we listen we listen to her <laughs> these all these gyms and not, I look I, I, again i just cannot i cannot thank you enough I, I, we never would be, would have gotten through this process if I didn't listen to what you said. And you said in those early recordings, I mean, those early live Facebook meetings, you said to apply early. And I was, get it in. The deadline is the 15th. Don't wait till the 15th. Get it in before the 15th. Make sure, I mean, that's the thing that I really hit home to my daughter and I have another one coming up. So I'm like, listen, you need to get this stuff done this year. You don't have to wait. She told us we don't have to wait until the year of senior year. I was like, get this stuff done. Learn from what Miss Tamika said. So again, thank, I'm like, this was great. So I had my own questions. I made sure I took care of all the questions that the mom had here. And I'm sure a lot of other people had some questions that hopefully, I mean, you should have helped a whole lot of people because you answered a whole lot of questions, right? Like, get it out. Number one, listen to what she said. To <laughs> so, so yeah. Now, hopefully, so so with that, I would love to know how it helped you. Helped you. So, if you're listening to it in replay, again, just type <laughs> replay in the uh, in the uh, comment section and let us know what you got out of it. What were some of your biggest takeaways? Because uh, as I said when I started this live. This is open for everybody. Yes, the primary focus we're talking about 
current seniors, but as you saw, there were nuggets shared for those coming along the way who hadn't gotten there yet. So you got some examples of what not to do. <laughs> you got a great example of what you should be doing. The choice is yours. It's up to you. It is up to you. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate you and everything that you do and have done for all of our students, the scholars. Well, I appreciate you for sharing and um, and just giving, listening. <laughs> just listening. <laughs> I mean, because I, I mean, I, I do. I get I get frustrated and it saddens my heart when I get those messages because I'm like, I've been preaching. We've been preaching this message for a very long time. And some of these messages haven't changed. And I get the same emails every year, all the time. And it's a different family, different situation, but the same context. And I'm like, why y'all just didn't listen? <laughs> Why don't you just listen? We give enough free information. Yeah, you really do. I am a living witness <laughs> and recipient of the free information yeah. that enabled us to do the things we needed to do on time, early even. Now, so and, that, and here's the thing too, though, with that, Jennifer, I just want to make sure everybody understands this. She also, there were some things that they already did along the way that allowed them to be in position to receive as well. It wasn't, a, it wasn't, it didn't just happen overnight. <laughs> there were steps taken years ago to forge the path forward that allowed them uh that allowed them to reap the benefit when they took the the free advice of start early and, and all those other tips that came out of those those uh the challenge and the sessions um that was shared in those lives so there's a there's a level of, of preparation that still must happen and don't don't think that oh she said apply early and you ain't uh completed no act or sat and uh, yeah, I ain't wrote not one essay. I mean, you just don't even have the fundamentals in place. Come on, the, is th this is not a miracle working process? That it requires some prep work. <laughs> so I want to make sure that's very clear because I don't want anybody to think, oh, I can just go and apply <laughs> next year. Hey, y'all ain't even done the darn prep work, Lord, because you know, you know, Miss Jennifer, somebody gonna think that all they gotta do is just show. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, sorry if that was the, but do you hear what she said? College prep boss. That's who she is. Preparation that made it so that we could do to take heed to the gems that she gave for free that we listened to because we were properly prepared. I'm telling you, y'all need to go ahead and get on Coach Tamika's uh, client listing. <laughs> <laughs> and then let me say this because I want everybody to understand this too. Because Jennifer came wanting me to wanting to hire me, but because her child was a senior, I could not. I told her it doesn't make sense because I, I want everybody to understand this. We don't we can't work with everybody, but there's a time factor with this. So don't come to me when your child is a senior asking for help. At that time, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah, um, so I couldn't work with her, but I utilized the information that she provided me. And so I was so heartbroken. It was like, but the thing I really loved and appreciated was her integrity. Because she could have very easily has said, oh, sure. That's senior. We got a senior program. Pay for that. She said, no, no, no. It doesn't make any sense for you to spend this money because we, we're designed from junior high all the way up. This is, we want you early. So you did all that preparation. That's what they want to do and take you. So this whole process is seamless. By the time the senior, they just sit back, get collecting and reaping the benefits from what was said. So I really appreciated the fact that she just didn't try to take me because she could have just gotten money. She could like, yeah, no, she's like, no, no. Uh -uh. Yeah, we, 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 
We she want to not, she she want to not take my money <laughs> because she knew that I was not, I didn't have time to be in the process to get the full benefits from her. But I got full benefits from the stuff that she did provide for free. Cause she I, yeah, I commend her for that because she could have very easily, oh, I can I look, I can work up a plan. <laughs> but she didn't she didn't allow me to do that. Not at all. So I really do appreciate it. So I like dealing with people that have integrity. See that that was that that was a very pivotal moment because she really so I'm telling you for people who are just now seeing her, I am not paid. I am not even a paid client. Like she said, she would not even take my money because she knows her process. She knows our whole program. And that at this stage, because my daughter was a senior, like I told you, I stumbled upon her. Praise God that I stumbled upon her. And I still utilize what she told me, but she told me she could, I, she could, I could not be her client for my senior. And I, I appreciate you for that. Participated on the free lives, the free uh, webinars, and she took those nuggets and she put them to work. I certainly did. <laughs> And so free doesn't mean that you don't have quality information because I utilize everything she said. And so much so, like I said, I pass it on to all of my senior parents. I pass them on to everybody. And I was like, no, this is the one right here, right here, right here. This is the boss. You need to get on these, free, get on all of her free. And you all have time to become one of her clients. Get it done now. Let's go. Let's go. So I, again, I forgot about that. I forgot that. Um, yeah, you, you were like, no. Cause everybody, out, everybody out here, don't don't uh operate with integrity, but um. You but know. you do, and that was a very because people could take your money just to take it, and she was like, no, she really could have had money. She's like, mm, no, no, so I, I really appreciate. I gotta look at my stuff every day, and I I gotta sleep with a clear conscience <laughs> every night. So that's just not how I operate. Um, so so folks, take all these gems, all these lessons. And look at what you need to do do differently and what you need to do better. What should you stop? What are the top three things you need to stop doing? What are the top three things you need to start doing and doing better? Those are the questions I will leave you with. So thank you, Miss Jennifer, again. Now thank you. She has a, a graduating senior crew. So if you're looking for a way to, to uh <laughs> celebrate. Your scholars and their accomplishment of graduating from high school and going off to college is to be, you, you know, because y'all you know when they get to college, they're going to be. That's it. Come home. <laughs> you come home uh, I'm going with my friends. So, hey, this could be like your last family. Just I know I'm going to make I'm making some of y'all sad. I'm sorry. It's uh, sad, but it's also <laughs> so very true because I did the same thing to my parents when I came back the first year. They were so happy to have me back home from college. And, and my mother was like, where you don't? Like, you, you just drop your bags and you're off. And the whole time I was home, I was gone with my friends. And I didn't realize, now I'm the parents. I didn't realize what that kind of felt like. Like, like my baby's gone. I just want to spend time with them. And they just want to spend time with their friends. And they allowed me to do that. Um, so it's coming. So this is why I do these things. I try to make sure this is the last time that this senior friend group really will all be together, including their parents. Because as they go to college, they meet new friends, they move away or they go to different schools and they and they, they gather their own friend groups from the colleges that they're attending. And very rarely is everybody available at the same time. Yep. This way they are still in high school they take the cruise and they get to come back and relive those memories that they made on the cruise while they're still in school. So like, that's a memory that's going to last a lifetime that they get to keep reliving for the next six to eight weeks until they graduate. Then, then they will decide themselves if they're going to get together in years to come. But at this particular time, it's the last time all of those friends and those parents have time to be with them. And let me just say this, parents, they ain't going to spend time with you on the cruise either. I'm just saying. We build, we build in activities because once they get on the cruise, like we have some activities that I do as uh, 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 through the company to make sure we all are engaged the very first night because once they get let loose, if you see them at dinner, you're good. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's just how it is. <laughs> Hey, this will be vacation. Everybody gets vacation. You with each Everybody. other, you're not with each other. So we'll post, we'll, post, we'll share the link. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, I'll I provide it for you. 
Okay, now share it. And if if you if you you know if you don't see it or you miss it and you're listening to the replay, just inbox us. We'll we'll share it. Um, so it can Thank be. I appreciate that, Miss Tamika. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Well, we will talk soon. Um, I appreciate this. Uh, we we uh, thank you all for taking the time to, for getting this information. Share it, uh, like it, share it, share your comments. And uh, until next time, remember the time to be ready is not the time to get ready. Your goal always is to learn how to be in a position to stay ready. Because remember, opportunities only come for people in a position of readiness. So put your baby, your scholar, your child in a position of readiness to win. This is your favorite College for Free coach, the College for a Boss, Tamika L. Williamson, signing out. Until next time, hey, stay safe, you all.